Okay, it's time for us to get started on chapter 7, and here we're going to talk about our microbes and how they eat, their nutrition, their growth, and the ecology. All organisms have to be able to get nutrients, and the process by which they get these chemical compounds or nutrients come from the environment, and that's to stay alive. And basically, we have six elements that compose 96% of our cells that are required for life. And in high school biology, you may remember chenops. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. C-H-N-O-P-S. Those are required for life. And also, there's some calcium, iron, sodium, chlorine, magnesium, and potassium that are required. Now, Objective number two, ask about nutrition. And this is an activity where the microbes get the chemical compounds they need from their environment in order to stay alive. And there are essential nutrients, which are substances that an organism must get from somewhere outside their cells. And we have macronutrients. Macro means big, so you need these in large quantities. And they play very important roles in cell structure and metabolism. And we're looking mainly at carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen here. The micronutrients, micro means small, so these are called trace elements, and they're required in small amounts. And these are involved in enzyme function in maintaining the structure of the proteins, manganese, zinc, nickel and copper are all micronutrients or trace elements. Now, objective number three, ask about the nutritional types. The main determinant of the nutritional type is where they get the carbon from. Heterotrophs get it from other organisms. Autotrophs are using carbon dioxide as their source of carbon. Now, how do they get their energy? Chemotrophs gain energy from chemical compounds, and phototrophs get it from the sun through photosynthesis. Now, the sources of these carbon-based essential nutrients, if they are heterotrophs, hetero is different, troph is to feed, so they must obtain their carbon from other living organisms and they get it as proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. Autotrophs are cell feeders. They use carbon dioxide as their carbon source because they're photosynthetic. They're not nutritionally dependent on any other living things. Saprobes feed on dead things. They get their organic matter, their proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids from dead organisms. They are also called decomposers, your fungi, bacteria, and some of your protozoa. You look here, this is a table of nutritional categories of microbes by energy and carbon sources. Notice the chemo autotroph. Um, they're going to get their energy from simple inorganic chemicals, and this is going to be some of the bacteria uh, and your archaea, like your methanogens and your deep sea vent bacteria. The chemoheterotrophs um, get it from other organisms, your protozoa, fungi, some of the bacteria, and animals. And here you have your saprobes. As we said, those are the decomposers fungi, bacteria, and some protozoa. Our concept check question here, if an organism is getting the nutrients from other organisms for both carbon and energy, it is best described as a 